Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we will be learning a very important topic and a task which is very commonly required. How to deploy a Spring Boot application to an Amazon EC2 instance. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. If you are new to Amazon EC2, think of it as a powerful virtual computer in the cloud provided by Amazon Web Services. You can use it to run your applications just like you would on your own laptop or server, but with way more flexibility and scalability. It's a great option if you want your Spring Boot application to go live, be accessible to the world, or handle real traffic. It's also a must-have skill for anyone diving into cloud-based deployments for their next project. In this video, I'll walk you through every step from setting up your EC2 instance, and don't worry, it will be free of cost, to creating a Spring Boot application and creating its jar from scratch to running your Spring Boot application jar on it. So, whether you are a developer trying to level up or just curious about cloud deployments, this is a perfect place to start. So, let's get started. We will start with creating an EC2 instance. For learning purpose, you can create an AWS account and use it free for one year. In the free tier, you can use EC2 for 750 hours per month for free which is more than enough for learning purpose and hosting an application that runs for some specific times during the day. Log into your AWS account. This is a landing page when you log in. You can find EC2 here. If you don't see it here, search EC2. Click the link. Create a new EC2 instance. Click Launch Instance here. Or you can also click Instances. Here you will see all your EC2 instances. Click on launch instance here or here. Give a name to the instance. This is the image of the OS that will be installed. You can use anyone as per your needs. We will be using Red Hat Linux. It lies in the free tier. It will be a 64-bit machine. Select the instance type as per the processing required. We will select T2 Micro since we don't need any additional processing and it also falls under the free tier. Next is the key pair login. This is required if we want to connect to EC2 instance from a terminal. We have to do this, so we need to generate it. Click on create key pair. Provide a name to it. Type will be RSA. Regarding file format, if you will be using Mac or Windows 10 or higher, then select PEM format. And if you are below Windows 10, then select PPK format. In that case, you need to connect with EC2 using PuTTY. Click Create Key Pair button. This will download a file. Save this to some location. Leave rest of the settings to default. Click on Launch Instance. We have the instance running. Click on this. This is the public IP at which this instance will be accessible. Next, we need to control the access to this EC2 instance. Scroll down. Click on Security. Click on Security Group attached to this instance. Security Groups control incoming and outgoing traffic to an EC2 instance. Click on this Security Group. There are the inbound rules. Inbound rules control incoming traffic to the EC2 instance, so you can restrict or allow a client to connect to your EC2 instance. If you look here, incoming traffic at port 22 is allowed, and it is because of this rule that we will be able to access EC2 from command line. Our EC2 instance is ready. Now let's create a Spring Boot application that we will be deploying on this EC2 instance. Open Spring Tool Suite. Click on File, New Spring Starter Project, Provide a project name, Select Build Tool Type, Maven or Gradle. We will go with Maven. Packaging will be JAR, Select Java Version, I will go with Java 21. Language is Java, Provide a Group, Artifact, Version, Description and a Package. Click Next. Select the dependencies. 
Since you are creating a HTTP REST application, select Spring Web. Click Finish. The project is ready along with the main class. Create a new class which will be the controller for handling HTTP request. Add REST controller annotation at the class to make it a Spring controller. Provide a get mapping with an endpoint and return a string message from this method. Now, when we access this endpoint in the browser, we should get this message. All this is covered in various videos on this channel. Link of one such video is at the top right corner and in the description as well. Now, let's create a jar of this application. Right click the project. Go to run as. We will install. This will download all dependencies, run it and create its star. Open command prompt and navigate to the location of this project. List all the files. Here is a target folder. List all files of target folder. Here is our application jar. Run it using java-jar command. The application is running at port 8080, which is the default port. Now we need to copy this jar to our EC2 instance. Open FileZilla or any other client such as WinSCP, etc. We will be using FileZilla. To connect FileZilla to EC2 instance, go to File, Site Manager, New Site, select protocol as SFTP. Host will be IP of EC2. To get the public IP of EC2, go to EC2 instances. Click on the instance. Here is a public IP. Logon type will be key file. Upload the key pair file that we downloaded while creating EC2 instance. User will be EC2 hyphen user. This is standard for all EC2 instances. Click on Connect. We have successfully connected to EC2 instance. Now, this is our local system. Go to the location of the jar file and simply drag it here. The file is copied. Now in order to run this jar, we need to connect this EC2 instance from command line of our local Windows system. Open command prompt. Navigate to the location where you have saved the key pair file for EC2 instance, since it will be required to connect. Type SSH and press enter. If you see this, then SSH is installed on this system. If you do not see this, then we need to use PuTTY to connect to EC2. Clear the screen. Type ssh-i, followed by the name of PEM file, which is the key pair file of our EC2 instance, followed by the user. Now the user will be EC2-user, which is the standard. At the rate IP of EC2, we need to connect. For this, again go to EC2 instance. Copy this IP. Paste it here. Enter. We have successfully connected to the EC2 instance. Check the current directory with PWT. List all the files with ls. Here is our jar file. Remember that this is a Linux system since we selected Linux image while creating EC2. So, only Linux command will work here. This is a fresh system so it will not have Java installed, which is required for running the jar. Type Java and press enter. See what it says, command not found. So, we need to install Java on this system. We can install it with yum, which is a tool on Linux that you can use to install applications. So, sudo yum install java, hyphen the version that you want to install. Remember that the version should be same or higher than the version on which we create the jar. Otherwise, the jar won't run. Since we created the jar using Java 21, we need to install Java 21 or higher. You can install any version by specifying it after Java hyphen. 
This will download and install Java on this EC2 instance. Installation is completed. Let's check the version using java-version command. It is JDK21. Clear the screen. Now run the jar file with java-jar command. The application has started on port 8080. To access this application, we need to perform one more step. Remember about the security group and inbound rules that we talked about earlier. Inbound rules control the incoming traffic to the EC2 instance and by default, all the incoming traffic is blocked. So, we need to add an inbound rule to allow traffic. Go to AWS console again. Here is a security group for this instance. There is only one rule which allows traffic at port 22. It is due to this rule that we were able to connect to the instance from command prompt. Click Edit Inbound Rules. Add rule. Allow traffic from port 8080, which is the port at which our Spring Boot application is running. Allow it from any IP, since we want it to be publicly available over the internet. Save rules. Now there are two rules. Open a new tab. Type the IP of EC2 instance, colon 8080, slash the endpoint that we want to access. This will be home. Look, this is working. So, our Spring Boot application is successfully deployed on AWS EC2 and it is working. Now, let me show you by disabling the inbound rule to port 8080. Remove this rule. Save. Back to the application and refresh. Look, it is not accessible. Finally, after you are done, do not forget to stop the EC2 instance, else its running hours will keep on adding. And if its monthly hours exceed 750 hours, then you will be charged for additional usage. For this, select the EC2 instance. Click on Instance State. Select Stop Instance and click Stop. Its status has changed to Stopping and will automatically stop after some time. If you do not wish to use it again, then you can delete it completely by going to Instance State again and select Terminate Instance. So, in this video we learned how to deploy a Spring Boot application to AWS EC2 from scratch, right from creating an EC2 instance to building a new application, copying and running it on EC2. Hope the video was useful and I'll see you in the next one.